our definition, like we talked about the median and our definition of that. We called it the middle score, but we said that's not the best way to describe it. We would say that the median, right, it's the number that divides up your set of data. It divides the scores into a bottom half and a top half, right? In other words, it divides them right down the middle into an equal set, right? So into two equal sections. Right? You have the bottom half, top half, and then the same size, the same number of people, scores, data points in both halves. Okay? And then we extended that. We said, well, okay, if you look at the bottom half and you look at the second half and you do this again, right, you get quartiles. Right? So these are exactly the same in terms of dividing scores, but instead of two equal sections, you get three. Four. four. There, are, there, are, there are three quarts. Okay, think about this, right? There's one median, which gives you two sections. Five. There are three <laughs> quartiles, which gives you four sections. Does that make sense? So four equal sections. Four. Okay? Now, therefore, and you can sort of guess by the name, right? If you then extended this again and said, well, what if I want a finer division of my set of data, right? Deciles is not two equal sections or four equal sections, but ten, ten equal sections. Now, follow the pattern, right? There's only a single median. There's um, three quartiles, Q1, Q2, Q3. How many deciles are there? The deciles are the dividers, right? To divide up something into ten yeah, groups, nine. you need nine dividers, nine. nine walls between them. So there are nine deciles. So you might say there's one of these guys, there's uh, three of these guys, and then there are nine deciles. Okay? Going on, one last step, the idea of a percentile. Okay, you don't need me to tell you what this next one's going to be, right? You're going to divide all your scores into a hundred equal sections. Uh, I need to see. Sorry, it's a very dark day outside. A um, hundred equal sections. Okay, now follow with me. There are, there's one median, three quartiles, nine deciles. How many percentiles are there? 99. There are 99. 99. 99. Okay, so put your pens down and I want you to think with me, right? The way we would, the way we would say this, the way we would use this language is to say, oh, you guys are in the 97th percentile of, say, you know, household income. Okay, now what does that mean? Um, don't write this down yet. Just think about this sentence with me. Um, you're in the 97th percentile. Dot, dot, dot. Okay. Now what that means is, because you've divided up all of your scores into 100 equal sections, and you're on the 97th one, right? How much of the population is below you? Below. Well, I should come back to this guy, right? If I said you were on the first quartile, right? How much, what percentage of the population is below you? If you're on the first quartile. Alright, let me draw them. Here we go. If you're in the first quartile, that means you're... Here's Q1. Right? So, I would say you're on the first quartile, right? So that means 25% is below you. Does that make sense? If you're the, like remember, the quartile is not a section. The quartile is a number. Right? So it's like you're right there, and here are all of the people beneath you. Does that make sense? If I said you're the median, that means there's going to be 50% below you. Okay. So now, when you think about this, how many people are below you? 97%. 97. Okay, good. So what you've got here is a very fine way of describing where are you in proportion to everyone else. Okay. Now, <laughs> it was quite a bit of work to work out what a quartile was. So you've got to get everything in order, you've got to do all of this. Deciles and percentiles, you will not be asked to calculate, find what these are. It's just too much work. We have programs, we have, you know, a spreadsheet will do this for us, okay? But what you do need to do is to be able to read and interpret these off a graph you've already been given, okay? So have a look at that piece of paper you have in front of you. And um, this thing looks weird. So I want to I teach you how to read it. Now you'll need a ruler. So what are you looking at? Let's just start with the easy things. Um, what's the title of this graph? 
Yeah. Okay, cool. So we're looking for BMI for, um, you know, two to 20 year old boys slash men. Okay. Have a look at the axes. You've got over here on the left hand side, that's the BMI going up. Okay. And then on the bottom, you've got age. Okay. So how old are these people? Right. So what I'm going to do is um, show you how to read this thing by trying to answer some of these questions, right? Now, just before I get to the first question, these wiggly lines, which seem to be like the important thing about it, right? What they represent, you remember I told you about the 97th percentile before. Let's talk about the 95th because that's the top, top one over there, okay? I need a little bit more of the graph. Uh, there we go. Okay. So let's picture, um, let's start over here. At age two, okay? If your BMI is here, right? That means, so like, well, 19 and a half or something like that, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, it's more than me, it's considerably more than me too. Um, if you are at this BMI at this age, right? That means you are on the 95th percentile for BMI. Now, thinking back to what this, mean, this means, that means that 95% of the population has a smaller BMI than you. Does that make sense? So if you're on the 95th percentile, which comes all the way down to here, you have a very high BMI. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, now the number for your BMI, the expected number for your BMI, it changes throughout your life, right? So for example, where's the median? Which one of the, look at the colors, which one is the median? The median is the 50th percentile. Right? The median is the 50th percentile. Because that means 50% is below and 50% is above. So it's this green one in here. Okay? So you could say, oh, well, like a normal person who's right in the middle of the bell curve, they're going to have this BMI over here according to their age. Okay? Does that make sense? All right. So now you have a rough idea. Let's go into the details. The first question says, and um, you'll need your ruler for this. And I'm expect the reason I photocopied this out is so you can draw all over this because you can't do it, obviously, with your textbook. It says, what is the BMI for 12 year old boys in the 85th percentile, okay? So have a look. Um, age is across the horizontal axis, right? So I see 12 is there, right? Now with your ruler then, draw up a line that shows all of the BMIs and percentiles for 12 year olds, okay? It should look something like this. Okay? So the way I read this now is I say, okay, if I want to know what the, for example, what the median BMI of 12 year old boys is, then I go, as we were just saying, to that, um, over there, to that green line, which is where the 50 is following. And then I'm gonna go all the way to the left and I'm gonna read a number off, okay? So that's how I'm using this graph. Now, I don't actually want the, um, the 50th percentile. I don't want the median. What am I after for this question? 85th, so have a look. From the top, those curvy lines, that's the third curvy line down. Right, so I've, I'm gonna mark that in, yep. And therefore I'm gonna go across all the way and it looks to me like that's a BMI of 21. By the way, if you wanna, um, well I mean, only the boys can do it for this particular graph, but if you wanna position yourself, just in case you can't remember, uh, BMI is weight divided by, does anyone remember? Height, height squared, um, and the height has to be in meters, okay? All right, so, I've answered that first one. The BMI for 12 year olds in the 85th percentile is 21. Okay, let's keep going. What percentage of 15 year olds have a body mass index that's less than 17.1? So again, I'm gonna to go to my the relevant axis. BMIs are all on the left hand side, right? Am I energy? No, they're just running in. It's just energy. Let's see now for me, because Mr. Anderson will come. Um, so where's 17.1 on the left-hand axis? 17.1. It's going to be about there, right? You can see that um, in between all of those lines, there's five lines in between, in between each BMI unit. So each one must be 0.2. So I'm going to go across to where 15-year-old boys are, right? Which is, if I draw my horizontal line, it's going to look something like this. Okay. So 15, that's a vertical line. So you can see it's going to be here. A higher BMI means you have more mass in proportion to your height, right? So a low BMI means um, you're tall and skinny, and a high BMI means 
the other thing. Okay. <laughs> so. Is it accurate? Uh, reasonably. Yeah. Uh, no, they're not. Uh, who knows? You can go look it up. It, it, it also changes. Like this kind of thing doesn't take into account. Yeah, it sounds about right. Yeah. It doesn't take into account things like um, you know, ethnicity matters, and you know what what. Um, time period you've grown up in like just think about this right you're like a bodybuilder yeah that's right well you you are going to factor into this yeah, like it, that's true so mass like muscles heavier than weight like that's right it's still in the ballpark though. okay so what's my answer what have I got here what percentile am I on I'm on the 10th percentile right so what percentage of 15 year boys have a body mass index that's less than 17.1 10. Now, just before I leave this question, what if I had answered it, asked it rather in the other direction? If I'd said, what percentage of 15-year-old boys have a body mass index that is greater than 17.1? What would be your answer? Everything but above 10. It'd be, it'd be everything above 10, which is 90% of the population. Does that make sense? How do you get 10? So, um, I've read across from 17.1 over here, and I've gone all the way across to 15 years old, which is, which is here. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, yeah, Because, yeah, of the line. Yeah. Yep, cool. Okay, can you have a go at part C without me help holding your hand? Have a go. Yeah. 